Hi everyone, it's Isaac again. So yesterday, Catherine and I, we finished our weekly tangent show. And for Nerd Corner, there was one more thing I wanted to mention. This thing is so cool that I decided to just make it into a dedicated video. So really quick backstory, about six months ago, Facebook introduced a new feature for their platform called 3D Photos. Now it was rolled out for iPhone users only. And the way it works is you take a picture on your iPhone and Facebook will convert it into a 3D image that you can kind of have a little more interactivity as you scroll through Facebook. Also, if you have a VR headset, these photos look super awesome, like they pop out in 3D. So here's an example of one. So you can see as I mouse around, you can see the background is moving independently than the foreground to kind of give it this 3D effect. And it really brings these photos to life. I super love this. It's really, really cool. So up until recently, it was iPhone only. However, about four days ago, Oculus, which is the company that makes VR headsets, they are owned by Facebook, announced that they are now allowing us to create our own 3D photos. So no longer do you need an iPhone anymore. You can create your own. And the way it works is that you upload your regular photo, and then along with that, you upload what's called a depth map photo. And so this photo right here, anything light gets put in the foreground, anything dark gets placed in the background. So by combining these two images together, Facebook converts it into a 3D element. Really, really cool. So here is the cover that I made in my last video, Destruction is Inevitable. Now let's see if we can bring this cover to life using the new Facebook 3D feature. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna call it Destruction is Inevitable FB 3D. So let's open this photo up. Here we go. Now the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to crop this so that we only see the front cover. So I'm hitting the crop tool right there. And then we're just going to drag this to about the center and hit return. There we go. Okay. There is our crop photo. So I'm going to do, I'm going to delete the back because we don't need it anymore. I'm going to delete the spine and I'm going to delete our template. Okay. So here's our cover. I cleaned up the layers a bit. You can see this is our final render. I'm going to hide this for now because I want to work on the actual elements in here. Let's see here. So let's think, how do we want to make this into 3D? So what I would like to do is have the monster with this van right here to be in the foreground. I would like the titles to be behind that. Then behind the titles, I would like this section here. And then we'll have the background. So I'm thinking we're going to have about four layers. So let's see how we can get this going. So the first thing I'm going to do is select our monster. And now if I hold the command or control if you're on a PC and click on this layer, you can see that we have our monster selected. Now this is great because we already cropped this out and we have all our assets ready to work with. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the van in here. And for this, I'm going to use the pen tool. This is the pen tool right here. And this will give you the ability to really fine tune your cutouts. So let me do that right now. So the way the pen tool works, you just click on a point and then you drag and you create these curves. By creating collection of curves and point, you can actually crop out just about anything you want. It's really cool. And if you're familiar with Illustrator, this is like the key tool for designing an Illustrator. Now I could have used, I could have hit W and used the quick selection tool but I found that a lot of these pixels kind of merge together. So it's really hard to get a clean selection for this van in the front, which is why I decided to just use the pen tool. I think that's good. So we're gonna click that. Now what I'm gonna do is, so we have our path. I selected where our layers are. If you select path, you'll see your path. Hit command to select that path. Then what I'm gonna do is create a new layer. Let's make this white because this is the foreground. And now I'm going to select the monster and go to my new layer right here. Hit option delete to make that white. So there we go. We have our monster. Now I probably want to make this part white as well. I'll just call this front. Now what we want to do is let's get the titles going. So I'm going to scroll down here to our titles and I'm going to hit command shift to select all the text elements 
for my cover. So you can see destruction is inevitable. And then the text down here is all been selected. I'm going to create a new layer here. Now for instead of making this white, I'm going to make this probably about 80% gray. So let's go down. So the brightness is down to 80 and then we're going to go on and hit option delete. And let's see here. Yeah, that did it. Command D to deselect. So now we have this layer and actually I want the monster to be on front. So I'll call this middle. There we go. Now what we want to do, I'm going to hide the monster for now. Okay. Now I want all this area right here to be a layer. So let's get this going. So I'm hitting my pen tool, hit P for the pen tool, and I'm going to create a path to cut out this middle section. Let's see here, I'm gonna delete this path. I don't need it. Let's go to layers, P for the pen tool. Okay, now let's create our path. Okay, so we have our second middle area, and I'm going to make this just a little bit darker. So let's make this 60 brightness. Option delete. There we go. So now we have our text and our monster layer. And then let's see, I think I'm going to do another one. Let's see, how about for this? There we go. And then what I'm going to do is create a background layer and make that black. So let's see here. That's what we have so far. I'm liking it. I'm going to select this guy right here. Actually, I'm going to use the pen tool for this one too. Bear with me. So the trick with the pen tool is just click and drag. That was how I was taught in school and nothing has changed since then. It's all blurry from the tilt shift effect. If you hold the option down and click on a point, you can stop the curve, the Bezier curve on one side. So that's kind of a trick you can get to fine tune your selections. And let's see here, I think that's good. I need to cut this part out. Select this, this layer, delete, there we go. Call it the man. So now what I wanna do is open up our death map. Now, with this death map, this area right here, which is kind of the, the main area of the city, the front part of this is going to be in front of you, and then this section right here is going to be in the back. So what I want to do, I want to create kind of a gradient effect here, and I can do that. So let's see, we got this at 50, so I'm going to put this at probably about 40% maybe. Actually, let's do 80. Yep, so it's a little bit lighter. I'm going to hit my gradient tool, G. Let's select this one. And actually, let's this one right here. And what we want to do is just, oh, the opposite. Let's see here. If I select this, it's the opposite. And let's see here. There we go. So what I want to do, maybe this needs to be a little bit darker. Let's go 50.
Okay, there we go. That seems okay. And let's see here. I think I might need to make this middle section lighter. Where, where are we at with this? Uh, we're at 80. Let's go 90. There we go. Okay. And now, yes. So now let's get our man and put him right here. Now what I want to do for the man, I'm going to take this bottom section right here, select that, select our man, and get him like that, just so he kind of has this cool parallax effect. He's going to move along with the scene. So I think this is pretty good. I think I'm going to keep this. Let's see here. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to save this image. Save as. PNG. Let's go to my desktop. Look, cover. Okay. And now I'm going to reveal my depth map. Save this. Now we're going to call it book cover as a PNG. Book cover, but this time we're going to select underscore depth. And that's how Facebook knows that the depth map is connected to the book cover image. So the trick here is that you need to add underscore depth to your depth map image. Save it. Now let's take a look at both our images. Make sure everything's in place. That looks good. Okay, let's see what this is gonna look like. So now I'm gonna log into my actual Facebook account and I'm going to post this. Only me, because I don't want other people to see this. Uh, no thanks, okay. And now let's drag these images onto Facebook and this is it. So let's see what happens. It is processing. Okay. Oh, it recognized it. We got something going on. This is exciting. Creating a 3D photo. We did it. Hey, look at this. Oh my gosh. This really brings it to life. I'm digging this. I like how the lightning kind of moves around. The monster's moving. So that's it. Pretty cool. So um, I want to show you this. It is a bit of trial and error. Not all images work. There is a bit of an art to this within itself. But you can see, you know, spend a little bit of time in Photoshop and you can get one of these together. I think it's great. You can use it for your promotional. If you do Facebook advertising, you can post it in your groups, post it on your wall. And it really, it brings your cover to life. So pretty cool. All right. Hope you enjoyed the video. Bye.